not a game, it's a red thing. Welcome to the third tutorial in this series of Spring Boot. In this tutorial, we are going to see how to set up a workspace for Spring Boot applications. As I mentioned in the previous tutorials, we know something called as an IDE. IDE is nothing but integrated data environment. It is a place where you code the software applications. So for Spring Boot, which is an opinionated project, we can use various number of IDEs. And the most commonly used IDEs are Visual Studio Code and IntelliJ. IntelliJ is having a community version as well as an enterprise version. Enterprise version is something for which you have to pay for the license. And if you are very well aware of, uh, are you from the Java background, then it is very, you know, good to use or would be convenient to use uh, Eclipse. And there is a Pivotal application that has been developed, which is nothing but the Spring tool suit, and this is built on the top of the Eclipse. So you can also use these many IDEs. So going forward in this series, what we are going to use is we are going to use Spring tool suit. So there are some persons, those who are uh, convenient with the Eclipse. They may also think that they are going to, I mean, if they want to use a uh, Spring Boot application coding in uh, Eclipse, you can do so. But one thing that you have to do is you have to download the project in the Spring Boot initializer. So I'm going to explain you all these details right now. So whenever you get into the website springio spring.io slash tools you can able to find the latest version of the spring tool suit over here so as i mentioned earlier like uh, spring tool for eclipse that means like this built on the top of the eclipse so based on which operating system that you are going, going to use so you have to download that so once you click on this automatically it would get downloaded and i am just using the windows machine so it's going to be get downloaded and once that has been downloaded, it will be in a jar file. So you have to extract it. So I've already done it. And uh, this is the like, once you get extract and if you get into it, you will feel, uh, you will find uh, all this contents. And over here, the spring toolsuit.exe is the one that we need to open. And one more thing I just want to keep you posted is like this INI folder. So while installing your uh, uh, your Spring Tool Suit, at that point of a time, there is a probability that would happen where these kind of uh, informations would be missing, especially that VM arguments. It would be in front of uh, VM plugins. If that is the case, your Eclipse won't open properly. Sorry, your Spring Tool Suit won't open properly. So you have to copy the contents and place it uh, after VM arguments. So uh, that one thing that uh, we need to take care of it. And by default, I have uh, tried it right now. And uh, while installing it, I have not got any error. So it looks perfect to me. And uh, if you want to know what version of Java is present in the Spring Tool Suit, you can able to find it over here, Java version 11. And as well as like, uh, you will be also setting the uh, same in your um, environment variables as well. So once you double click this, uh, your Spring Tool Suit would open. It is already got opened in my workspace. So I'm just going to show you over there. And in this, like um, once you open the project, initially like you will have the list of the projects over here so sorry a uh, list of options over here so in this uh, we can either create a java project as i said it's like an eclipse like uh, you can create a java project or what you can do is you can just start with a spring starter project so i'm going to click a spring starter project because i'm going to create a spring boot applications 
So once you click the Spring Start Project, you can able to find out like there is something called a service URL that has been mentioned. So what is it happening over here? So from this particular URL, based on the contents that you are going to mention it over here, it is going to download or get that particular opinionated kind of project. Um, if it is consume, confusing, like um, say for example, right now uh, I'm going to create a project in such a way it is going to have, do some batch processing. So at that time you can write Spring Batch and automatically your batch kind of uh, project would be created for you. And if you want any Amazon Web Services or something like that, even that is there. So as of now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a just a normal project. So I'm not going to select any of those. I'm going to click the finish button. Once the finish button has been clicked, you will find a project has been created based on the inputs that we have provided after clicking the spring starter project. So you can expand this, take a look at it. You will find uh, a main class and source class. I'll come up later like explaining you what is this all about you can also able to find a pom.xml which is got connected to the maven and uh, over here there is a, a main class is there this is the class like where your spring boot gets stats and uh, this particular annotation at the rate spring boot application is the one like where your uh, spring boot app gets stats so we will verify like whether our application is working fine or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write some sysout um, and over here I'm going to print some line. Um, I'm going to mention um, welcome to the Spring Boot applications. I'm going to save it and once saved what I'm going to do is I'm going to either right click on this or you can click on the source folder itself um, right click on this run as spring boot app so once I'm going to run it it is going to compile all those things and uh, your applications would be up and running so we are going to watch that so imagine uh, in your you know any companies or something like that wherever you're working in order to set up a project at first what you will be doing is you will be downloading a server a web sphere server um, from a particular place and you will be making your web sphere server up and running in your local and then later uh, you will be having your jar or web app and uh, those jar and web app whichever that is being present you will be putting that into a uh, web sphere or tomcat or jboss kind of a server in order to make your application up and running but over here we got a production ready application just uh, within a matter of a few seconds we just created a project and uh, over here the demo application was there and inside here I've written the code like this so I've just run it let's see yes it's up and running right now so that's all this is pretty much easy and uh, whatever the things that I've been doing like uh, in my I mean by downloading a web sphere or any server and deploying my app over there it is almost would take at least two to three hours as a fresh start uh, when you are going to do but we just downloaded it and uh, thereby your production application production ready application is up and running and that's what spring boot is all about so whatever that we have discussed it's an opinionated kind of a project and it is over here and one more thing i just want to keep posted is like few of the folks wants um, to you know get into the uh, use uh, eclipse itself at that time what we have to do is we have to use uh, something different so 
there is something called as a starter spring starter where we use to have a spring project initializer so spring boot initializer if you just click on that so automatically what it happens is it would uh, give you the spring boot initializer so this spring boot initializer is there right so you have to get inside the spring initializer and over here you have to give all the configurations whichever that we have given whenever we are uh, creating a project so we click on spring starter project at that point of a time uh, there were some few details like it was there already popped up by default and those information is the one like that we have to give it over here so once you click on this all i mean mention all this and uh, just uh, click on you know mention all those details like which kind of a spring boot app and whether it is a maven project or a gradle or you're going to use java or a groovy and uh, mentioning all those stuff whether it is java 8 or java 11 and then if you just click on generate it would generate a project and this particular project it would be downloaded in your browser and this project you can either open it in eclipse or uh, intellij or visual studio code where you can also work on it so that's it from this tutorial so it is pretty much easy and um, you can able to find like you have a, your production ready applications up and running with uh, no hassles and without any um, i mean without any uh, like downloading stuff which is used to take a lot amount of huge amount of time and uh, one more thing i just want to keep you posted is this particular spring boot is being uh, used apache tomcat and if in case if you want to modify some other server or something like that then your palm.xml you have to go ahead and change it so those are the details with respect to this particular uh, tutorial and in the next tutorial i'll get back to you with some other different topic thanks and have a nice day ahead